All right. Well, it's a pleasure, as always, to be in the Lord's house with all of you. If you have your Bibles, would you turn to Luke chapter 2? Luke chapter 2. This morning, looking at uh, just that passage that uh, Bethany uh, just uh, recited to us. Uh, And I want us to see this morning uh, exactly what the angels meant by uh, their proclamation there. Uh, When they said glory to God in the highest, what does that mean? And what does that uh, impact on us in our lives uh, and in our proclamation to uh, the rest of the world? And so if you have your Bibles in Luke 2, We'll begin reading in verse 4 together. The scripture says, And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace goodwill toward men. And now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you and Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you that out of the mouths of of babes and sucklings, you have ordained strength because of your enemies. And Lord, we thank you that that strength is through the word of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray this morning that you would reveal him to us and his mercy towards us. Lord, we pray that if there are any lost in here that don't know him, Lord, that you would draw them into fellowship with him by faith, uh, that they would be saved, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would go with each one of us and you'd help us to uh, declare what we read about this morning, that Christ came into the world to save sinners. Lord, we pray that uh, you'd be with those that are not with us this morning to give them help and comfort, Lord. Uh, Lord, to give them healing in their bodies and in their uh, souls, Lord. We ask that you would be with our missionaries, help them to do the ministry that you've given into their hands. And Lord, be with our leaders in this land, help them to remember Jesus Christ on this season. And Lord, how he, uh, as uh, the ruler of all creation, uh, condescended and came down uh, to serve mankind and to give them uh, his mercies. Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, that you would forgive us. And Lord, that you would help us to Uh, better obey what you've commanded us to do in the days ahead. And it's in Christ's holy name we pray all of this. Amen. The focus that I would like to have this morning out of our passage is in verses 13 and 14. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace goodwill toward men. The angels came in mass, and the message that they brought was that glory should be to God. They were praising his name uh, in the same fashion that we praise his name this morning when we sang songs, and as we pray this morning, and as we read the scripture uh, together, uh, we are praising God, and our goal is the same as their goal here. But they were coming to worship God. They were coming to give him glory, to make his name known in the earth. Glory to God in the highest, they said. And 
This is what the angels were made to do as well as we. We know that we were made for the glory of God. Uh, and we know that the angels were also made for this. In Hebrews 1 verse 13, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? The angels are ministering spirits. They are spirits which serve. They are spirits which do the will of God to his glory. Uh, they are, are uh, here coming in service of this end. Consider also the words of Jesus in Matthew twenty-two nineteen. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Uh, speaking of the, those that are in the resurrection, he says they are as the angels, being neither married nor given in marriage. And we might ask, why are they not given in marriage here? And the reason is so that they can dedicate themselves to that one purpose for which they were made, to give glory to God. 1 Corinthians 7.32 says, I would have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. This is not to, to denigrate marriage. This is not to put it down. Uh, but it is a fact that when you're married, you do have to put effort towards maintaining the marriage. Uh, it, it's, a, a, in one sense, a diversion away from doing other things. You have to look after the things of your spouse. But the angels, being unmarried and not being given to be married, it isn't permitted them to be married in heaven, uh, is for the purpose that they should dedicate themselves to the worship of God. They are, are wholly given over to the things of the Lord. And these who are dedicated to this, who are made for this, who all day and night are doing this in heaven, here have come to the earth and shown themselves to the shepherds. Hebrews 1.5 says, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. There was not one angel on the side of the Lord left in heaven when Christ came down to be among us. Let all the angels of God worship him. And they all did. They came and showed themselves to the shepherds, saying, Glory to God in the highest. And the occasion of this, of course, was the birth of Jesus Christ. But let's uh, look at what uh, the angels worship him for in heaven. Uh, the angels worship him for his glory, for his power, for his wisdom, for all that he is. And above all, or not above all, but, but uh, among all, uh, not in any way inferior to anything else that is God, they worship him for his justice towards the world. In Exodus 34, 6, the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and to the fourth generation. God, in his essence, is good, and goodness is justice. He comes and visits iniquity. He comes and punishes sins. Uh, they worship him for this every bit as much as anything else they worship him for. 
Glory to God in the highest is glory to him that sits in the highest, that sits in judgment over man. Revelation eleven sixteen. The four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. The twenty-four highest seats in heaven, the twenty-four angels, they get up out of their seats and they fall down before God and they worship Him because He is just, because He is a judger, because He uh, passes judgment and deals out punishments to the wicked. They worship Him for that. Revelation 16.5 says, I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shalt be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of thy saints and the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. They praise him because he brings his judgment on the earth. Revelation 19 Two, for true and righteous are his judgments. For he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Alleluia. Her smoke rose up forever and ever. Uh, in, in these places and many others, the angels worship God for his justice because of, of his wrath against sin. It's something that we don't do often. We don't give God glory uh, uh, like we should for the fact that he is the judge, for the fact that he will put things right in the end, that he will deal out just punishment when it's all said and done. We do on occasion, we do when we see uh, the wicked, uh, that they... Uh, escape punishment on the earth or when we uh, see that uh, something isn't right in the world sometimes we praise God that he'll come as a judge but we don't do it as the angels do they come always praising God that he will bring judgment on all flesh and they will even come at the end of the world with his judgment 2 Thessalonians 1 7 says, To you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he comes with his angels, it is with judgment, taking vengeance through hellfire on those that obey not the gospel, who do not come and trust in Jesus Christ. And so the coming of the angels here, all of the host of heaven, let all the angels of God worship him, coming to these shepherds, abiding in the fields, out in the open and exposed. It might have been a terrifying thing for them to see all of this coming on to them. Matthew 5.21 says, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, Thou fool, shall be in danger of hell fire. Uh, we ought to be just as afraid of God's justice as the angels were. We have broken the law, or as the shepherds were, we have broken the law uh, of God just as they had. Uh, we've all been angry with our fellow man without a cause. We've all uh, called names uh, of someone. We've, we've slandered their name because of hatred 
towards them. Uh, the shepherds must have been afraid here. And we ought to be afraid when we hear the words, Glory to God in the highest. Because who is God in the highest? But he that passes judgment over the world. And yet we read the second part of the passage. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Not only is God just, and he's glorified as just, and he is the judge over all the world and passes judgment, but he has goodwill toward us. He has sent peace to us, and that by his emissary of peace, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 9 verse 6 says, Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. That is the government, the rulership, the power shall be on him. The authority to judge will be on Jesus. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Jesus came as God Almighty, as the judge of the world. And yet he came the Prince of Peace, bringing peace to the earth, bringing goodwill towards men. He who could rightly be angry at us because we have raged against him, we have hated him without a cause, he has come in peace towards us. Romans 5.8 says that God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. This was the end that Jesus came for, to come to show and commend the love of God to us, to die on the cross for us, so that we might have peace with God. Uh, Romans 5, 1 says, Being therefore justified by faith, we have peace with with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this all he did by the incarnation, by coming to the earth, by being born of the Virgin Mary, being a man for us, living a perfect sinless life and dying on the cross. Romans 4, uh, Galatians 4, 3 says, Even so we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. When we were in bondage, when we were in the elements of the world, when we followed after the Prince of Darkness and all those that love him and his ways, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem us who were under the law. Right. Hebrews 10.4 says, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, To do thy will, O God. Above, when he, had he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offerings for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein, uh, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. 
he came and had the body prepared for him because nothing else could put us at peace with God. His drive to be reconciled to us drove him out of heaven in among mankind to come and be a man, to come and suffer as a man, to take the punishment of men and women on himself and to reconcile us to God by his death. And this is why the angels are worshiping here when they say glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. It's said of the angels that concerning the incarnation and the gospel of Jesus Christ, that such things the angels desire to look into. They came because this was the greatest act of God's goodwill, God's purposes towards mankind, that Jesus Christ would come and be a man to save mankind. And so, believers, this morning, as we have our Christmas season, I simply want us to uh, remember the greatness of the Incarnation. That Jesus, who is just, who is above all sin, who was higher than the heavens from the beginning of the world and before, that he came in the likeness of weak flesh, in the form of a little child at the first, so that he would live and he would die for our sins. Consider that uh, if he that is the judge and is just and hates sin more than anyone, if he came to suffer on behalf of sinners, if he came and was inconvenienced by the cross for our sake, then who can accuse us? Who can bring any charge against God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is also at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. This morning I'd also like us to consider the reaction of the shepherds to this. Hearing that God had come in meekness and in love towards his creatures. In verse 15 of Luke 2 we read, That it came to pass that as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is, do, which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. When they heard, they went, they saw Jesus Christ, they looked on him, the marvel that he was, and then they went and they told. They made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child, that he would be the savior of his people, that he is the goodwill of God towards men, the emissary of peace. Let us go forth this week and in our families, in the, uh, the people that we know, whoever we meet, Let's remind them of what Christ has done for them. Psalm 66.16 says, Come and hear, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. And Mark 16.15 says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is our task for the week. Uh, to remember the glory of the incarnation and to go and tell the world what Jesus has done for them. And now if there's an unbeliever in here, I'd like to uh, again reiterate what Christ has done for you. Christ has shown the greatest love towards you that any human being, any creature that God himself could show towards any in that he came 
and gave his life for you. John 15, 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. And Romans 5, 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were wretched, while we were detestable, Jesus died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you would only lay hold of Christ by faith this morning, you would be saved from your sin. Christ has shown the greatest love towards you in coming to die for sinners. And he only calls on you today to come and believe and be saved. And so I pray that if there are any that don't know him, that you would come to know him before it's too late. And again, believers, let's, uh, let us take this same gospel to those that we know, reminding them that Jesus Christ is the reason for uh, hope in God, uh, the reason that we give him glory, the reason that we serve is because Jesus loved us and came and died for us, that whosoever believes would not perish. Now let's go to our Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you and we thank you for uh, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for uh, his presence in heaven for us. And Lord, we pray that uh, you would give us by him all that we need this week to take his gospel to the world. We pray that if there are any uh, that don't know him in here this morning, that you would draw them by your spirit. Uh, Lord, that you would help them to know that uh, Jesus has loved them, that he came and died for them, and that by faith they can have salvation in his name. Lord, be with those that are not with us this morning again. Help them to remember Christ in this time. Lord, help them to uh, show his grace towards them by the way that they live and they speak to others. Lord, we pray that you would be with our missionaries in the same way. Help them uh, to remember Jesus on this week. Lord, be with our leaders. Uh, we ask that you would uh, uh, pardon their sins by Jesus Christ and call them back to obedience to you to serve this nation in your goodwill. And uh, Lord, we pray that where we've sinned against you, that you would forgive us and keep us to the day of Christ. And it's in his name we pray it all. Amen.